Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free impartial advice on all your debt. This is something that comes along every now and then in generation and it's special. This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. You can tell we're recording this uh, Friday, kind of nearly evening time. Dominic Ingle looking very chilled out and relaxed there. Yeah, just done all the work this morning, last day in the gym this morning. Everybody's gone back for the weekend. Uh, Bradley Ski, uh, William Chinson has gone back home. Uh, Liam Williams. So, yeah, it's, uh, we've got the weekend off. Everybody's back Sunday evening and back ready for Monday. Good to hear it. Before we talk about uh, your gym and get the latest updates on it, Dom. Uh, I'll ask about tomorrow night. Obviously, a huge night um, going into 2021 because we all want to see this Fury-Joshua fight. But tomorrow night, Joshua has to beat Kubrat Pulev. Do you see any dangers with tomorrow night? We know it's heavyweight boxing, but do you see any dangers specifically with Kubrat Pulev? There can always be dangers. I mean, look at look at the, the fights, recent fights we've had. We've had uh, J- uh, Joyce Dubois. They were in position for a world title fight. Uh, the boy got beat. Look at Anthony Yard and, and the other fella. He got beat. So, you know, it's they say things, bad things come in threes. But I looked at Fuller's record. He's only been beat by Klitschko a few years back uh, when they were both in the late 30s. And I was going to say, well, you know, he's past it. He's 39. But, you know, look at Povetki. Look at all these heavyweights. Heavyweights can last longer. They can go into the 30s and still perform well. So, you know, I think Joshua underestimated heavyweights the first time. I think he's, he's learned from that. Um, I don't think we're taking any risks. Uh, I think Joshua will just box to orders, get the first couple of rounds out of the way and look for the openings. And if you can see weaknesses in Pulev, I think he will try and take him out after his, his cautious performance last time. Because people want to see excitement with Joshua. Uh, you know, that's one of the, the, the draws with him. That's why he does big box office, because he's, he's always crash bang wallet. Uh, last time he boxed, he just had to play it safe, you know, get the win. So I think he'll, he'll start trying to break Pulev down and then maybe go for it a bit later on. So he can't, he can't take any chances. He's got to be very, very careful. Do you think fighters going in with Anthony Joshua now will view him differently after what they saw in New York against Andy Ruiz in the first fight? Well, they know, he's, he, they know he, there's a chink in his armour. He's just trying to exploit that chink in it. And, you know, it doesn't always work that way. Look at Lennox Lewis when he got beat. You know, more, more or less, he just took his eye off the ball in the fight when he lost to Lennox Lewis and, and, and tended to avenge the losses. So, you know, I think that's what it is with Anthony Joshua. I think he took his eye off the ball. Everybody does it. Uh, and I think he, he's learned from that. And to go from his style of banging them all out to a boxing style and on the back foot shows that he was willing to learn and do something different to get the win. Some fighters can't adapt and change like that. So now he's got two sides to him. Whereas what before, really, he only had the, you know, the attacking style going forward. Now he's learned how to survive, how to defend how to box a different way, which is always going to be an advantage to him. If he ever gets into trouble again, he can always go on the back foot and start boxing, get out, of, get out of danger, regroup, and then go back on the attack. How do you think, uh, with that being said, that he's got you know, different variations to his game now because of that loss, do you think that gives him a, a little bit more of a chance against Tyson Fury, or do you just make Fury a clear favourite in that one, Dom? Uh, you know what? Tyson Fury is just one of those very, very difficult, awkward styles to be. And not only does he, he, he beat your boxing, he, he, he burns your head out, he plays all the tricks in the book. Um, I think it's this Joshua's got a better chance of beating him post, you know, uh, sorry, pre Ruiz. Because I think Anthony Joshua had to learn a lesson in that fight. It was almost in that first fight when he got beat, you could see him in the corner thinking, I've done something wrong here, no matter what I do. I'm not going to be able to pull it back. Because there were times when he was boxing his way back into the fight, getting Ruiz under control, then he'd get clipped and it'd all go tits up again. So I think Joshua's had that learning experience where now he's going to be a bit more cautious. So I think it will be an advantage that he's learned to box a little bit more because it will give him time. Because if Tyson comes on top, Joshua is good close in. So that'll be an advantage to Josh, Joshua. But he will, ex, he will exhibit a bit more patience. And that's what you need with Tyson Fury. You've got to be patient under pressure. And you've got to try and play him at his own game. Well, hopefully it happens next year. And uh, another fight we really want to see next year is uh, your man Liam Williams in against Demetrius Andrade. However, 
Eddie Earns made some comments recently that he's in he's in talks or there are talks ongoing between Billy Joe's camp and Dimitris Andrade's camp. So uh, is Liam perhaps getting prepared for fighting for a, a vacant world title shot against whoever's next in line, Dom? Look, in boxing, you never know, dear. And we'd like the Andrade fight. And I think if I was Andrade, I would be looking and thinking, I'd fancy Billy Joe Saunders as to Liam Williams because Liam Williams, that attacking style and on you and pressuring you and the run he's had and the consistencies he's had uh, looked better on paper than Billy Joe Saunders. And, and Billy's performance last time, you know, to say that almost a year out wasn't fantastic. But that's the thing with Billy. Andrade underestimated Billy Joe Saunders because Billy Joe Saunders just does enough to pull it out of the bag. And if I looked, if I was Andrade now looking at Liam Williams or Billy, I'd think, yeah, go for Billy. Uh, but Billy will be training over Christmas. He, he knows he's, he's had his year out now and he's got to be on it and that Eddie's going to give him the fights. And I think, you know, Andrade would be underestimating Billy Joe Saunders. So I think if Eddie can make that fight, all well and good, make it. Liam Williams is still training still ready for a date next year for a world title fight. It doesn't really matter who Liam William boxes as long as he gets in the fight and we know in advance who it's going to be, whether it's Mongia, Andrade, or whoever else they decide to put in front of him. He's had a good run of late over the last you know, 12 to 16 months and he's in a good place, he's on it, he's disciplined in what he's doing. So it's just a case of whoever they put in front of him. Dom, if, uh, well, Liam will get his world title shot next year. If he is to secure that world title, how much do you think Liam can, can achieve in this game and where do you think he can rank in uh, kind of British boxing greats? Do you think he can go right to the top, Liam? Uh, well, I, I don't know. It's a fight. You know, it depends. Some people become a world champion and they sit back on it and, and just waste the, you know, waste the time as a world champion. But, you know, Liam just loves to fight. And the more regular he fights, you know, every every 12 to 14 weeks would be great for him. If he can get that continuity, then it'll be great. I think he can have some good fights, uh, and it, and he can make a dent and and uh, you know get get away the big, get up there with the big names. But you know, with this COVID thing going on, who knows how it's going to pan out? You know, too much inactivity inactivity with any fight is always going to going to spoil the interrupt the flow. So I think if he gets his chance, I think you know I think Liam is more than capable now the second time round of winning a world title. He's more mature. He's more focused. He's more switched on. And like I say, he's had, he's had a good run for the last couple of fights. And that, that counts for a lot. Uh, he's entertaining. And he loves to have a fight. So, you know, I think he can. I think he can. I think he can I'd love to see him in, you know, get the world title fight. With the box. I'd love to see him fight somebody like Golovkin or Canelo as well. Because, you know, what a cracking fight they'd be. It'd be toe to toe stuff. That's the way Liam fights. Uh, and, and, you know, Golovkin's not getting any younger. Uh, and, you know, it'd be a great name to have a name on his resume if he could do that. Mm, definitely. Don, what happened with uh, Willie Hutchinson and Lennox Clark? Uh, we had we had Willie training for that fight, and he had a couple of great spores, and then a few days later, maybe maybe three weeks out from that fight, he just came down with something. He had a few days off, had all his COVID tests. It wasn't COVID, he had some blood tests. And, he, and his, his markers in his blood were showing inflammation, which generally means you've got a virus. And the thing is, there were days he felt all right, and he'd do a session, then he'd just crash. And it's not worth taking the risk at that point because, you know, three weeks out, he's not really enough time to recover. And it's only now, probably in the last, you know, ironically, after the weekend when he was supposed to box, he started to show improvement. But, you know, some people think, well, if you're all right a week before a fight or two weeks before a fight, you should fight. But being ill takes a lot out of you. And that's why so many fighters, when you hear fighters getting, uh, getting beat, well, I, went, I wasn't right a week before. I should have pulled out. Yeah, you should pull out. You should never fight unless you've been you know, in good health for at least four weeks before a fight. You're going to get little run downs and little colds and aches and pains. But you need a good clear four weeks before a fight. I've been absolutely perfect health before you fight. And so many fighters, because they've put time in camps, they've spent 12 weeks, they've spent money, sparring positive results. They're reluctant to pull out. And you want to hear after they get beat. Oh, I wasn't well, I should have done this session and that. I've had so much experience in that situation before. It's never worth taking the risk. He's 22 years old. He's got all the time in the world. Do you know what I mean? There's no point rushing to making mistakes at this point. So we can wait another, you know, another six to eight weeks till February when that fight's going to be rescheduled. And I'm sure that, you know, William Chinson will do a great job on him. Of course, that fight uh, came around because... Lerone Richards uh, moved to Matram and, and didn't fight 
on that order from the ball uh, for Larone and, and Willie Hutchinson. What did you make of Larone not accepting that fight and obviously moving to, to match him as well, Dom? Pro- probably a smart move because, you know, Willie's on the up uh, and it's a case of balancing up. You know, is Willie a bit inexperienced? I think they've had sim- I think they've had a similar amount of fights, but Larone is a bit older, very good boxer, um, very good boxer indeed. And I think, you know, people talking about his power, some people just haven't got natural power. But and some and if you haven't developed natural power by, by 20, 29, you're probably never gonna do it. So he probably needs to stick to his game of boxing. And he's sparred Willie a few times and it wasn't look, it wasn't a punch up, it was just technical sparring, very good. It, it uh, I think they both got an idea of each other. Uh, how it might pan out in a fight and it's a, probably a small move by Laron but somewhere down the line I think the paths will cross uh, you know Laron had been out for a year and, and probably really wasn't the fight you want to take after a 12 month layoff so you know we'll see what happens in that situation but as far as Willie's concerned it's just about getting the British title you know he got uh, Laron beat Lennox on a split decision so it's a good enough fight it's close enough um, but you know Willie's on the up he's, he's focused and uh, He's spending all his time in Sheffield and he just wants to be a champion and he's putting everything into it. Yeah, I agree. I have a feeling uh, Willie Hutchinson and Laurent Richards will part, uh, cross past one there. And who knows, it could be for a, a world title, not a British title. Exactly, exactly. That's, that's, you've got, always got to look at the big picture. OK. Uh, yeah, also Bradley Skeet. Uh, we know uh, he's uh, linked up with Virginia, Jim, etc. And uh, he, will be, he will be in action next year, Dom, yes? Yeah, I mean, look, Bradley's came back after a bit of a layoff. He, you know, with most fighters, they, they tend to fall out of love with the game and it's difficult to be walking in the gym and, and training. And, you know, he came up to the gym, did a couple of sessions and it really switched him on. He's dropped weight. He's looking in fantastic shape. He's got no fight there. And to be able to do that with no date in mind shows spending five days away from home, uh, being in Sheffield around like-minded people, Liam Williams, Robbie Davis Jr., all these types of, all these kids. He switched him on. It's a great environment for him to be in. It's almost given him a new lease of life. He's done a little bit of open sparring with various kids, nothing heavy. And he's still got the speed. He's still got the style. Uh, but he's, he's rejuvenated, so to speak. So hopefully next year he can get a promoter or get into some, you know, get somebody interested in a fight with him. Because, you know, he's, he's had that experience. He's, he's 32, I think. And he could be a name on, you know, it could be a notch on somebody's bedpost, so to speak. But I think he's still got a little bit left. Uh, so it'll be interesting uh, to see how he goes and see if any promoters pick him up for a fight. Okay, I'm sure uh, people will be interested in Bradley Skeet. Dom, um, we started on the heavyweight division. Let me close off on the heavyweight division. You mentioned earlier about uh, Daniel Dubois' loss. Now, he came in for a, a lot of stick uh, from people who were in boxing about how the, the fight ended. Uh, a situation that you know very well with Kel Brook, uh, especially in the, the Errol Spence fight. We know Kel even reached out to Daniel kind of offered him some support. What did you make of the stick that Daniel was getting? Listen, you can't please everybody. And uh, you're always going to get people giving you a stick. If, if it balances out, it's always like 50-50. You'll get 50% of the people giving you a load of stick and 50% giving you some support or giving you the support. I've had it in lots of fights with fighters. And you, you've just got to be thick-skinned and forget about it and go back on you know, to the next camp and the next fight. And, and that's... You know, what Dubois has got to do, he's only young, he's only 20 odd, he's only like 22, 23. Joyce is mature, he was calm in that fight and composed. Maybe Dubois just believed a little bit too much in his power and went for a bit too early instead of having a bit of patience. Um, but he got an injury, you know, I don't know whether it's a fractured socket or not. It was fractured. But the one thing, he, well, well, listen, he 100% made the right decision. 100% made the right decision because... Some fighters don't survive one fracture and carry on. Kelbrook had two fractures and carried on his career. Hopefully, Dubois will be mended. He'll come back strong. It's not like he got knocked out. He didn't get knocked out. He didn't get a big shot on. He didn't go to sleep. He, he, more or less, he, he didn't finish on his feet. He finished on one knee. But he made the right choice. Um, so, you know, I think he's got plenty of heart. He's got plenty of bottle. Uh, that doesn't come into it. Only he would know... Uh, you can, it's, a, it's a distinct feeling when your socket goes. Everybody I've talked to when they've had the socket done, it, they say it feels like their eyes dropping down into the skull. And that's, that's how they know. So he made, you know, he's probably saved his eyesight and he's probably saved his career. And we will give him, you know, the, the, the boxing people will give him another chance. His promoters will give him another chance. And he'll get a few more wins and then everybody will be back on his side again. He's still got a future in the game. 
Yeah, I wanted to ask you that because obviously you've been in a, in a similar situation with Kel Brook and his eye injuries. But yeah, Dom, thank you very much for your time. Uh, enjoy the card tomorrow night and we look forward to a huge 2021 for your stable, all right? No problem, mate. Nice speaking. Thank you, Dom. This is something that comes along every now and then in generation and it's special. Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO. Free, impartial advice on all your debt.